You know, you remember we talked about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? We talked about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's takes on people like Kyrie or Jonathan Isaac or Andrew Wiggins, just players in general who have not got the vaccine. Bradley Beal, Michael Porter Jr., like these people have not got it, right? He said they're idiots, they should be punished, this and that. Like you got it, this is public health, this isn't X, Y, and Z. So now another big-time center has come out and made his statements in regard to pretty much just Kyrie Irving. Like Kyrie Irving is the the spearhead for any COVID vaccine basketball policy. Like, he's the guy. So this is what Shaq had to say. I don't know if this is Shaq's podcast or he was on someone's podcast, but this is what Shaq had to say about Kyrie Irving. I try not to belittle another man's opinion. However, let me tell you what, what I think. In this game of ours, sometimes you have to think about other people rather than yourself. Now, Kyrie has his views. He has his opinions. I'm not going to knock that. But he does have an obligation because he took that two hundred million. Right. The only thing I don't like it is, oh, I, I, can you know, you know, respect my privacy. Once you sign up for this life, there is no privacy, and you have to accept it. But if you're on my team and you can't play uh, home games, I don't want you around. Like we have a chance to win, and if you ain't on the program, go somewhere else. Period. Hey, whatever your reasons are, cool I'm with that, but. You, we ain't going to be going back and forth for 41 games, whether you're going to play or not. Get your ass about it. So, once again, Kyrie Irving, get the fuck out. Just go somewhere else, play somewhere else. We ain't got time for you. From a player perspective, I understand that point because if you are a star player, you don't really want to be – you want you want people on your team who are ready to go, they're ready to play, they're ready to win championships, right? That's how I feel most players probably feel. I would really – like, obviously Shaq doesn't play anymore, so, like, his opinion on it is – I would like kind of irrelevant to the to the to the point of me saying the Brooklyn Nets. Now, from a player perspective, someone who played in the league, who he's put himself in his shoes, if he would have had to go to, it makes sense. But as far as relevant to 2021, it's not really relevant. I want to know what someone like KD thinks, right? I want to know what someone like James Harden thinks, Blake Griffin thinks, Lamar Aldridge. Like, what do these guys, Lamar, Lamar, Lamarcus Aldridge? What do these guys think? Because they're actually playing on his team. Will they stand with Kyrie when he misses 41 games? Or would they rather trade Kyrie, potentially pick up some good off the bench pieces for Kyrie, and try to go win the championships? Will it be a distraction for them? Will every post game they play in the Barclays be, man, how would it have been if Kyrie played with you guys today? Have you tried to get Kyrie to get the vaccine? Like, what are the questions going to be like for these players moving forward within their journey as well? It's just interesting to see. And. All the things I said yesterday are kind of like null and void because I thought it was he can't play anywhere and play in New York and play in San Francisco. But if he does get traded, like I said, down to the Rockets, he could play against the Warriors if we make it to the finals because he's not from San Francisco. He could play there. So he still has a career outside of basketball if he gets traded somewhere else. But then what happens when everywhere starts to mandate certain things? Then what happens to Kyrie Irving at that point? He's left out there on that ledge. Him, Andrew Wiggins, Michael Porter Jr., Bradley Beal, like they're left out on this edge. Jonathan Isaac, they're left out on this bridge they can't get off of. Now you got to make a decision, your career, your hopes, your dreams, or what you feel like is your morals, your virtue, whatever you want to stand on. What do you do? And for them guys, most of those guys at that point, it's like, bro, they made their money. Bradley Beal, he's probably set. Andrew Wiggins, he's probably set. Jonathan Isaac just signed a four-year extension with the um, the Magic, getting seventeen million a year. Now I don't know how that's broken down after agents, taxes, this and that, but it's still a pretty large chunk of change. I'm assuming he's taking home. And to me, Jonathan Isaac seems like he has a second career path already set up for himself once he's out of basketball. He he he's a full-on minister. He has a ministry, an actual like also not as big as a Joel Osteen, obviously not as big as a TD Jake, but he has a ministry to where after basketball he has something that can help him, right? He can sell books. He can do whatever. He can do speaking tours. Whatever. He's doing a ministry. But I don't know. I kind of feel bad for Kyrie because like he's like he's always scapegoated as like this villain. He wanted to leave LeBron because he wouldn't have his own thing. He was kind of made to be the villain there in Cleveland. He goes to Boston. He gets made to be the villain in Boston. He goes to Brooklyn and misses games. His personal reason, this and that. He's made to be the villain now in Brooklyn. Everywhere he goes, he seemed to be made out to be the villain. Now maybe some things are self-inflicted. Probably. But it just seems everywhere he goes, he's going to get that villain stamp. And 
one thing we know within leagues, NFL, NBA, all these leagues, once you get labeled as some kind of locker room distraction, not good for the team, not this, not that, you'll eventually be pushed out to the side because they'll just find somebody. Now I don't know if they're going to find a talent like Kyrie, right? This ain't like the NFL. A lot of guys can be plug and play in the NFL. That's why you see so many great players get whooshed to the side. Because they'll just plug in somebody else who really wants to play and they'll put up some type of numbers. Basketball isn't the same like that. Like the stars, the stars, and most people, if you a bench, you a bench most times. But they'll find somebody they don't got to worry about. And that'll just be the way that it goes. But it's interesting to hear uh, someone like Shaq say that. Because I thought he just went on a whole rant about like he's denouncing the celebrity life, he's denouncing this, he's denouncing that. But. Now, when it comes to being famous, just because I play basketball, I have no more privacy. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not given the grace of privacy now that I'm a basketball player. So even my own personal health, uh, my own personal health decisions, can no longer be private just because I play basketball. And obviously, they're not private because once we see him not playing, we'll know why he's not playing. We'll know he's not playing because he didn't get the vaccine. And I just want to make everything clear because I like to make things clear. I'm not against the vaccine. I just literally, in the beginning of the podcast, said I was signing up to get it. <laughs> but I just got sidetracked and I went to the store. But I was sitting there going through the thing. Okay, I got to read this, read that. You get one dose this time. You got to go this time. Like I was literally setting it up and scheduling it. I'm probably still going to end up scheduling it within this week. 